Okay. Okay, thanks, Bill. So we will go ahead and get started with tonight's workshop. So the topic is how to reduce spending, which I'm personally super excited to hopefully learn some tips and tricks to use personally. But I just wanted to take a minute to welcome the folks that are on the workshop. We may have some joining us throughout. There were several that have RSVP'd, so we may see some other um, names throughout the presentation. But our, pres our presenter this evening is Bill Folks, which is um, a partner. He works for Green Path, which is a partner of Extra Credit Unions, our partner experience manager with Green Path. He has been with Green Path since 2008. Bill started as a financial counselor, and now he works directly with credit unions to provide financial education and partner with credit unions to help members like all of you reach your goals. So I will turn it over to Bill, and then at the end we will um, allow for some questions, and we will also have um, a giveaway to announce at the end of the workshop. So take it away, Bill. Thank you, Ashley. Um, as Ashley said, my name is Bill Folks. I'm going to be your host for tonight's webinar. Um, first things first, I just want to get a couple of housekeeping items out of the way. Um, you'll notice that you are all on mute. I've muted all of the uh, participants to cut down a background noise, but I do want you to be able to participate. So if you have questions, please put them in the chat box or hang around to the end, and we will answer those questions at the end. Um, but uh, do, uh, thank you for all for joining. And I want to take just a few seconds to talk about who Green Path is uh, before we get started. Green Path, we are a nonprofit HUD approved housing and financial credit counseling agency. Um, we started out as the budgeting service for the Michigan Credit Union League. Um, from there, we grew to, a, to be a regional consumer credit counseling service. Now with Green Path Financial Wellness, we provide counseling in all 50 states over the phone, face to face counseling in 22 states, and our headquarters are still right here in Michigan. We are, are, are headquartered in Farmington Hills, um, and it's just always a pleasure to be able to work with our credit union partners, especially those credit union partners who are neighbors here in our backyard in Michigan. Um, we provide uh, financial counseling in the areas of housing counseling. We, we will provide a financial assessment, which is a budget review. We will do credit report reviews with people, and we also offer debt management services, which are designed to help people who are concerned about their debt. And if you do want to seek a free path to complete a counseling session, you can call us at 877-337-3399, and be sure to let them know that you are a member of Extra Credit Union. So let's go ahead and get started. Um, I want to start by talking about how we can reduce, how you can might reduce your spending. And actually, that's the, the topic of our webinar today. Um, a lot of times, people want to reduce their spending, but a lot of times they don't know how to start. Thankfully, there are some simple trip, uh, tips that you can use uh, if you're looking to reduce your spending. And we're going to start with a conversation about something called the costly seize. Now, that's something that um, I first heard from a colleague of mine here at Green Path. I don't know if he made it up or not, uh, but he, uh, he, he likes to talk about the, the, the costly seeds. And this is really just an easy way for us to remember these. Um, these are expense items that start with the letter C, and sometimes these things are needs, and sometimes they want, they're want. wants. They can be things that we buy regularly or things that we buy every so often. But these are items that can have an impact on your budget very quickly. And they can include things like clothes, cinema, coffee, carry out, cable, car, cell phone, convenience store, cigarettes, and children, and more. And I'm not telling you to get rid of your children. In fact, um, of all the things on there, probably the only thing I would encourage you to get rid of are the cigarettes and maybe the casino if that's a problem. Uh, but I do want, we do want people to think about how these things can influence their budget and influence their spending, especially your children. I mean, you, you, if we, those who have children, we want to make sure we, we want to store our children, but we just want to make sure that we're understanding how that's impacting our um, budget. Um, and just think that if you got carry out, um, one of those seasons carry out, if you got carry out every day for lunch every day and you spent $7.50 on it over the course of a year, you're going to spend $1,800. Um, now, you can save quite a bit by cutting that back to three times a week, and you'll say uh, spend about $1,080. That's still a lot of money, but you but you've saved some money. So focusing on those three Cs can really help make a difference in your budget. Um, personal story, um, back when I was working at my last job, before I came to work at Green Path, I worked for the city of Dearborn in the treasurer's office. And um, 
every single day, I used to go to lunch with these two coworkers, a woman named Ronnie and a, and a gentleman whose name also just happened to be Bill. And um, one day in 1999, Bill retired. And Ronnie and I, we're still friends to this day, but we stopped going to lunch every day. Evidently, Bill was the catalyst for that. And I, we both realized just how much money we were saving and how much money we had left over, not by going to, to, to lunch every day. Um, that five, six dollars, whatever it was back then, it didn't seem like a whole lot then, but every single day, it added up. So once again, folks into those things can really help make a difference in your budget. Um, another way that's, that makes it easy to overspend are your credit cards, uh, because that makes it easy to swipe and go about our day. This, these days they're trying to take just about all of the work out of it. You can, you can uh, uh, have your credit card information saved to your phone. Um, a lot of times you can just tap the, the reader at the credit card even instead of installing it uh, in, the, in the machine. And often we use it without realizing that we have to pay off those charges later. Um, well, once again, it's, it's, it's easy to, 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 to do those things, and it may not seem like a lot, but they do add up. So if you're looking to, to cut back on your spending and, 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 re, and reduce your spending, um, I would encourage you to try to stop swiping or at least cut back on the swiping. Um, so we save our credit card information in all of our favorite apps so we can quickly hit purchase as well. We use Venmo and Apple Pay and mobile apps that, that are intended to make our lives easier, but the question you need to ask is, are you overspending because of these things? So take time to reflect on, reflect on that purchase you're charging. Imagine that you just completed an Amazon purchase and you ask yourself, yeah, I really need that. I would guess in many cases that the answer would be probably not, or maybe even an emphatic no. Um, many of us, when we get our credit card statements, we wonder how did I spend money, spend my money this month? And we'll pause and ask ourselves, is this really worth buying? Um, a trick that I started using, and this is just something that I've done to, to make things easier on myself, is I like to buy things from Amazon, and uh, what I do is I will load a, uh, a gift card on Amazon and do my spending from that. Um, and that way, I'm always aware of how much I'm spending and, and what I'm spending it on. When you go to click that purchase on the gift card, it tells you what the balance is if you complete that purchase. And so, you know, that's a, that's a good way for me to say, okay, is this something I really need? Um, I'm seeing how much money I'm spending each money and uh, each month. And that's a trick that, that's really helped me cut back on my Amazon purchases because I'll be honest with you, I was to the point where the Amazon truck was at my house every other day for a while there, and I've really cut that back. And these days I still order from Amazon, but it's generally things that I need. And now it's about down to maybe once or twice a month instead of every other day um, with the Amazon. Um, so a lot of times you might find other tricks that might help you, and if you have any that you want to share with the, with the participants, go ahead and put those in the chat. Um, but we're going to move on. Um, we all have habits and routines, and we also have triggers. So today we're going, to, you know, we're going to continue to work on how to redesign those. And it's important to shift our mindset when forced, when forced new habits. Try not to focus on banning bad habits altogether but rather ways that you can empower yourself to make new habits that will contribute to your, your financial goals. And, and that is the power of habit. You know, a lot of times if you're, if you're looking to, to change, uh, save weight or lose weight or save money, it's not a good idea to, to deprive yourself. Um, yes, you do want to uh, make better habits and think about what you are spending your money on, but it is okay to, to, to treat yourself every once in a while as well, but it's important to, to form good habits around when you're going to treat yourself and how you're going to treat yourself. It's kind of like if you're going on a diet, you might decide that, okay, Saturday is my cheat day. Uh, and on Saturdays, I can, um, I'm not going to eat everything I want, but I might eat things that, I'm not, that I wouldn't normally uh, eat any other day of the week. So it's, it's really about forming, uh, forming better habits. Um, one idea to, to, to save money is to cancel subscriptions. A lot of times with the click of a button, you can easily sign up for a subscription to stream music or your favorite shows. And it's easy to be roped into offers for gym memberships, uh, grocery de uh, delivery, or box subscriptions. And these have relatively small recurring costs, but they can add up quickly. Uh, many times we're unaware of exactly how much money we're spending on these subscription services. And if you use products like Netflix, Amazon Prime, Hulu, HelloFresh, and Spotify, then you know how convenient subscription-based services can be. But do you really know how many monthly subscriptions you're paying for at the moment? 
Um, in fact, according to a 2018 uh, survey by Waterstone Management Group, 84% of Americans grossly underestimated how much they spend on subscription-based services. The study found that on average, people assumed they paid around $80 a month of recurring uh, monthly expenses. The actual cost was close to about $238 a month. I saw that when I was counseling, I would speak with people and, uh, you know, and I do uh, uh, financial counseling with couples and one person will say, okay, we're spending maybe about $300 a month in groceries. And the other person will say, you know, we spend maybe that much in a week. That's probably closer to about eight or $900 a month. A lot of times we underestimate how much we're spending. And, you know, especially with those subscription services. And so people feel like they're spending 190% less on subscription services when they're actually spending more. Uh, so today is the day to review that the subscription you have, how much you're spending, and evaluate which, which subscriptions you may be able to go out to help, uh, to help reduce your spending. A um, few years back, actually more than a few years back, I stopped counseling for Green Path in 2016, 2015. That's when I moved into this position. And one of the last people I counseled, he was from right here in the Detroit area, um, he, he called because he was afraid that his mortgage was uh, too expensive. He, he didn't think it was affordable anymore. And he was afraid he was gonna lose his house. Uh, to make a very long story short, his house payment wasn't a problem. His, his mortgage was actually very affordable. Uh, he had a great interest rate, and the payment was like 25% of his gross pay. And, and generally, when you're looking to take out a loan, they don't want it much more than about 30% or so, or so. But his mortgage loan was 25% of his gross pay. His issue was is that he was spending money on a lot of subscriptions that he wasn't really using. Um, he, he was paying for all the bells and whistles with his cable, for, uh, cable package, and he was barely watching TV. Um, and the thing that really stuck out in my mind is he had a gym membership that was about $300 a month. And he couldn't tell me why he was, why it was $300 a month. And keep in mind, he lived here in the Detroit area. He wasn't working out with celebrities in Beverly Hills or something. Thankfully, in his case, he was past the point where he could uh, cancel that subscription without penalty, so he was able to cancel it. He saved himself some money, and he looked at other things he could save, and he was able to save himself a lot of money that way. <clears throat> it's not always that easy, but in his case, it was, but you'll be surprised at how much money you can save if you just take a look at what you're spending on, on, on those subscription services. Um, so I'd like to issue you a challenge, and um, maybe there's something you can do maybe when you get home tonight. And so call this homework, but it's, 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 yeah, it's not something you're gonna have to turn in. Um, but I want you to um, identify current subscriptions and think about everything you have uh, described, uh, subscribed to. Uh, make a list of all these subscriptions, and there are many apps currently available to aid this process, such as Truebill and Trim, but also be sure to include any non-virtual subscriptions, such as uh, magazines, newspaper, mail delivery services, that gym membership, et cetera. Um, and then evaluate your subscriptions to decide which subscriptions are important to you and which you could go without. Um, as you do this, you might say, okay, I do like my Netflix. I watch it pretty regularly, but you know what? Hulu, I never watch it anymore. So to help make that easier, ask yourself, have I used this in the last 30 days? If you haven't used something in the last 30 days, and if it isn't making you happy, then it's time to think about canceling it. Um, or asking yourself if this is redundant. If you have duplicate services, like once again, say Netflix and Hulu, um, pick one and cancel the other, especially if you find yourself using um, one more, more than the other. Um, another idea is considering sharing the cost of, of, of some of these services with someone else. Um, if you can share the cost with someone else, do it. Many apps offer family plans that can add up to additional savings when, when shared. Um, is, this, is the expense really worth it? And that's, you, you still have to ask that. An expense may seem as small as the monthly price, but when the yearly cost is put in perspective, is it still worth it for you? For example, $15 a week doesn't sound like much, but that translates to about $780 a year. Add up your, add up your total subscriptions to, to a cost over the course of the year and see if it still makes sense for you and your final situation. And finally, once you, you've reviewed everything, once you've identified the subscriptions you can live without, it's time to let them go, go ahead, cut the cord, take the step to cancel those subscriptions today so it doesn't auto-renew. Add up the amount from these subscriptions and see how much you've saved and consider uh, putting the money you saved into a savings account. Um, next uh, step to reducing your spending 
is to consider, um, you know, reducing your decisions. Um, the average adult makes 35,000 decisions every day. That seems like a lot, but, you know, a lot of times it's something simple, as simple as um, do I want to uh, turn left here or if I want to turn right here on my daily walk. We decide what to, what to wear, what to eat, what to look at on social media, and so much more. And all of these decisions can lead to something called decision fatigue. And that is a psychological principle where the more decisions you have to make, the harder it becomes to make good decisions. Um, by making the, uh, the environmental shift to remove some of these decisions, it can make things easier for you um, to meet your goals. Um, so go through your mobile apps and stop them from spamming you with notifications that may trigger your spending. Once again, that, that's uh, removing a decision you have to make. Um, for example, are you receiving notifications about an upcoming sale? Uh, by turning off the notifications, you won't be tempted to spend more before you're ready financially. Um, design your life to support the person you want to be and support your financial goals. You can also try downloading a budgeting app to help you stick with your goals every month. According to, next, uh, let's take a look at changing your view. And according to a survey by Social Media Today, the average person spends nearly two hours a day on social media. Um, over the course of an average lifetime, that's over five years of your life on social media. Your behavior is impacted by what you're seeing on social media each day. In addition to preventing an overload from, of locations from your apps on your phone, you could choose to unfollow stores and, and sell sites on your social media feeds. Um, you are, if, if you do that, you make a decision to, to shape what you're seeing so it's easier to make the decisions that support your dreams. Um, a lot of times when I'm on uh, social media, I mentioned to you that I do uh, quite a bit of shopping on Amazon, I've, I'm a lot better now than I used to be. I I, I purchased a lot less, uh, a lot less than a lot less than I used to uh, order, and I think my wife appreciates that. We're kind of backwards of the of the of the uh, traditional stereotype. I'm the one who loves to shop. My wife's the type of person when she goes to a store, she goes to a website, she wants to get in there, get what she wants, and get the heck out of there. Me, I like to browse and spend time in there, and so um, I'm pretty sure she 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 appreciates the fact that. That, um, that I'm spending less money on Amazon, but I do find up seeing those Amazon um, ads in my social media feed and other stores that I've gone to and that I've liked um, on my social media feed. So it's a, it's a good idea to, to possibly, if, you're, if you find that, that those things are causing you to spend, consider um, muting those uh, notifications or stopping them altogether. Um, another way to save money is to save on your utilities. Uh, so turn down your thermostat. Um, what could you do if you save more money on your electric bill this month? Um, the Department of Energy estimates that uh, savings of 1% uh, for each degree, you turn down your thermostat. Furthermore, they recommend turning your thermostat back 7 to 8 degrees for 8 hours each day. Um, now, before the pandemic hit, when most of us were leaving for leaving work for the leaving house for the day, that was pretty easy. It might be a little harder now, um, but it's something I think most of us can, can manage. Um, if you do that for eight hours each day, you'll see a 10% savings on your bill. Um, a programmable thermostat is actually a great way to control the, the, the temperatures in your house and automate savings, and that way you can uh, program the thermostat to raise or lower the temp temperature at certain times. Um, when Black Friday comes around again, and that's going to be about six months from now, maybe this would be uh, could be one of your uh, plan purchases. So if you think if you if you if you think about something you need, such as that uh, adjustable thermostat, and you're not able to get it before then, um, go ahead and consider getting that on Black Friday when it might be cheaper. And you can uh, purchase uh, when you purchase an adjustable uh, thermostat, you can generally apply for a rebate with the electric company. Um, <clears throat> another option is to switch to energy efficient light bulbs. Um, energy efficient light bulbs use 70 to 90 percent less energy than traditional bulbs. Um, as a result, switching your light bulb can help you save 30 to 80 dollars uh, per bulb. Um, and according to Energy Star, uh, energy efficient light bulb lasts 10 to 25 years longer. Um, I can attest to that personally. In my bedroom, my wife and I we bought our house 16 years ago, and I put some energy efficient light bulbs up. I switched out, swapped out the old ones for energy efficient light bulbs. Just this past month. One of those bulbs finally burned out 16 years later. Um, so they do last a uh, mighty long time. The other option uh, idea is unplug your electrics. According to a, a survey from Money Mustache, I've never heard of that one, but according to a survey of, from Money Mustache, 
every watt of constant drain costs you about $12.63 per decade in lost wealth. Um, and he, and it, it doesn't sound like a lot, but he breaks, they break it down further with some examples. A two watt uh, seashell night, night light in your guest bathroom can cost you roughly 25 bucks. Um, a forgotten incandescent porch light that never turns off can cost you up to 758 bucks. So try unplugging all of your electro, uh, plugging all of your electronics into a power strip that can, you can easily unplug or turn off when you leave for the day. This, you can even put uh, smart power strips on your Christmas list. I've seen those on Amazon and I've considered getting some. Um, another idea for seven utilities is wash on in cold water. Um, now, you've, I've seen commercials on TV now with Stone Cold Steve Austin and Ice-T where they're encouraging people to wash in cold water, but that's something that, that Green Path has been recommending people for years to wash your clothes in cold water. Uh, according to the Environmental Protection Agency, the average family washes 400 loads of laundry each year. And um, if you can save $136 a year by switching from hot to cold water, these days with the detergents that they make and the machines that they make, they're very efficient and you don't really need hot water even for, for things that normally uh, you would use hot water on. Um, and the website Money Crasher gives a lot of additional tips on how to save on your laundry costs. Another option, and I'll be honest with you, um, when I first presented this uh, workshop uh, about a year or so ago, I had to look this one up, but use dryer balls. Um, and dryer balls is a laundry hack that where you're basically adding these, uh, some, these balls, and sometimes they're made of wool, and they can reduce drying time by 25 to 50%. And they also can eliminate the need to buy dryer sheets because the, the static electricity will normally wind up in your clothes, somehow get stuck, uh, get sucked into those balls. Um, this is another tip that requires you to spend some money up front to save money on the back end. Uh, but this is the true definition of mindful spending. Um, kind of like buying that thermostat, that's also mindful, mindful spending because you're considering a purchase with a plan in mind that is going to be able to help you uh, save some money in the future. And finally, schedule an energy audit. Most utility companies have rebates and incentives to help encourage you to reduce your energy consumption. So take a money, uh, excuse me, take a moment and visit your utility company's website and see how they can save you even more. See if, the, if a energy audit is a possibility. Um, there are multiple there are multiple ways to save money on utilities as well. By and by trimming back on your utilities, you'll have more money each month to put toward financial freedom and holiday gifts and hopefully savings as well. So finally, as we start wrapping up, um, and as you think about um, your spending, I would like you to consider answering these three questions and please be honest with yourself. Um, first question is, have you ever walked into a grocery store and walked out with something you weren't planning on, planning to buy? Um, to be honest with you, that was a big problem for me. Some time ago, I started making sure that I'm sticking to the list because I've always had to shop with a list because if I don't have a list, I'm, uh, not only am I going to come out with things that I didn't mean to buy, but I'm also going to leave things in the store that I needed. So I, but these days, over the last couple of years, I've made it a strict policy to stick to the list. It's very rarely these days that I'll get something that's not on my list. But have you ever walked into a grocery store and walked out with something you weren't planning on buying? Have you ever had to throw away food? And have you ever gone out to eat because you have no idea what you're going to, what you're going to make for dinner? And I'll be honest with you, the second one and the third one are things that I, that I do. We don't throw away food very often anymore, my wife and I, but we do occasionally. But quite often we will go out to eat simply because we don't know what we're going to make for dinner. And that's really easy for me and my wife because we don't have any children. It's just the two of us. And so a lot of times if one of us doesn't feel like cooking, then, hey, we'll just go get something. Um, if you've answered yes to any of these questions above, um, you have an opportunity for additional savings. Um, so let's walk through some ways that some, uh, with some pre-planning tactics that's going to help you put more money back in your budget without sacrificing uh, the things you need. And this is really going to uh, serve as our wrap-up here. Uh, step one, start by buying what's on sale. Um, and I really like this idea. And basically this, with this idea, you're going to take a look at weekly ads and create a grocery list around the items that are on. And you know, that many meal staples and household cleaning items that are on sale, you are going to need. So if, you, if there's something that you know you're going to need uh, coming up, such as Clorox wipes or toilet paper, if it's on sale, consider getting it then. But definitely uh, step two is, is including building your meal plan around what's on sale. 
And by using a meal planning template, which you can find online, uh, look up meal planning template, you can start with your staple meal. So, and, uh, for example, if chicken breast is on sale for a dollar ninety nine a pound versus three ninety nine a pound, you're able to save two dollars. And this small thing really really adds up, um, but it's really helpful as well to, to you know to to plan your save your your meals around the things that are on sale, and that way you're 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 able to to save money as you make um, your your meals. Um, third is make a list. I mentioned to you earlier that, that I've always shot from a list, but over the last year or so, I've made it a priority to make sure that I stick to that list and not not deviate for, from it. And it may also be helpful to organize by category um, or, 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 by, or by the store if you're shopping at multiple locations. Um, also, you want to make sure you use some coupons for items on your list. Um, now, we talked about, you know, those apps and how they can be a hindrance sometimes, but they can also make things easier for you. Um, I do a lot of shopping at Kroger, and um, on the Kroger app, it will have coupons loaded in there um, that you can use for certain things, especially if it's something you know you're going to buy. And when you get to the checkout, uh, all you do is you scan your Kroger card or scan your the, the thing on the app, and it automatically applies so cute, those coupons for you. Um, and you can also uh, check uh, coupons websites such as coupons.com, or you, and you can also utilize cashback rewards apps for, sh uh, for grocery shopping, such as I vote. I've never heard of that before either before uh, the first time I did this one. But don't forget traditional coupons as well. Um, check your mailbox for coupons and your Sunday newspaper if you're still getting it. Um, the Sunday newspaper is one of those subscriptions I wound up canceling about five years ago because I realized I wasn't reading it. Uh, going a little back in time there because we talked about that a few minutes ago. And finally, own the grocery store. Um, if possible, go to a grocery store in the morning. Um, this is when the store is usually stocked and you will have the best selection. And that's what it means by own the grocery store. Um, you're, 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 there's there's going to be a, a better selection. A lot of times I find that, you know, that there's not as many people um, in the store. But, of course, that's not always possible. If you can't do that, um, Wednesday and Thursday nights are also a good night to go shopping because, once again, there are not a lot of people uh, shopping on those evenings, um, or at least where I live. Um, part of practicing smart shopping is, is to only buy what's on your grocery list and bring just enough cash for the items on your list to, to reduce that temp, uh, temptation to overspend. Or if you do tend to impulse buy, ask your spouse or your, your significant other if you have one, if they can do the shopping, or order online and pick up your groceries at, at the store. Um, also, shop less frequently. Fewer trips to the grocery store leads to fewer impulse buys and more money in your pocket. So, um, to summarize, shop early, make a list, avoid temptation, reduce trips, and take control. And that's it. We've reached the end of our webinar, um, How to Reduce Your Spending. I do want to thank you for joining us today. Um, once again, Green Path Financial Wellness, we are a national, nationwide nonprofit that provides financial education and tools for people to help them lead financially healthy lives. If you do want to call and do a counseling session with us, um, you can call us at 877-337-3399. Ashley? Can you hear me, Bill? <clears throat> yes. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Wow, that was a lot of information. I know we ended earlier than um, anticipated, but I actually took some <laughs> of my own notes, and so I figured I would just share some of the things I took away um, to kind of wrap up as well. And then if anybody has anything that they want to share that they do to reduce spending that wasn't covered or maybe something that they learned, um, and then we have May that's going to jump on in just a minute um, with a giveaway for folks. Um, that are in attendance. So um, stay tuned just for a few more minutes for that. But um, some things I was thinking about um, is what you were saying is the costly fees. And I was going through that list and boy, I have a little piece in all of those fees. And so um, that was interesting personally for me to see. I thought the Amazon gift card idea was a nice idea because I do have an issue with buying things on Amazon and they are not always needs, um, but it's convenient, it's easy. Um, and so I kind of have found that I don't really shop around for price anymore. I just go to Amazon, which I know a lot of times they are one of the cheaper options, but I just go there because of the ease of having it delivered. And so um, just thinking about 
paying for convenience. Um, is it worth it? Is it not worth it? And so that had my mind going a little bit. Of course, the subscriptions, to review the subscriptions, I definitely um, probably should do a review of any subscriptions that I have outstanding as well. Um, and then you started talking about saving on the light bill, and I was looking around my house at the little night lights and things that are plugged in that um, don't necessarily need to be plugged in, you know, especially during the day or the ones that don't need to be plugged in at night. So um, I was thinking about that a little bit when you were going through that, and I was able to answer yes to all three of those grocery questions. <laughs> um, so it appears that I need to kind of take a look at some ways personally that I um, can reduce spending and save a little bit. And I, I always go back to, I used to be a Tim Hortons freak, and I would buy a coffee at Tim Hortons on the way to work almost every day. And so prior to the pandemic and working from home i started brewing coffee at home and trying different flavored creamers or different things that i could do at home to make it more of a delightful coffee beverage but not um you know spending the money to purchase that coffee every day on the way to work and so now it's more of a treat if i happen to to be out um in near one and i haven't had one in a while i'll get one and i, I will say that they even taste better when it, it's more of a treat so i definitely benefited from the information you shared and before may does any kind of um giveaway i just wanted to see if anybody wanted to share um something that they learned or maybe something that they're already doing um to reduce spending and maybe increase savings a little bit that might be helpful to others that are on the call as well it looks like laura has her hand up so she may have something to share i don't know if you have to unmute her bill i will uh, but you know what i've never heard the recorder off so i'm going to do that right now i um, just for the sake of the recording thank everyone for joining us and have a great day